since I did my Sunyishka career mode back in FIFA 20, I've gotten questions, people saying, do it again, this time complete it. And quite frankly, the reason I stopped doing it was because I thought it was not really getting any views. People weren't enjoying it. Now, apparently, people did really like it. Um, at least in recent history, people have kind of I'm come... Listening. Thank you. My phone just talked to me. That's great. <laughs> that was so scary. What? Anyway, um, people have been saying, hey, you should do this again. You should go back and in FIFA 21 do a Sinyushka career mode. And actually, if I go to uh, the channel real quick and go here, um, as far as like Sunyushka goes, it was getting like maximum five views, and and now it seems to have like picked up, weirdly enough. And I only did three episodes. I think I had a few more recorded, but I was like, what's the point in trying to edit all these videos together when I can make football manager videos that would make be somewhat more interesting and get a bit more views, which is basically what I did. Um, Anyway, taking a look at the team here, we can pretty much see a couple familiar faces from last season. So, um, the way I'm looking at it is definitely going to be a three at the back playing system. I'm not going to go with this system. I'm probably going to do something more along the lines of um, either uh, probably this type of system moving these two around um, depending on where I want to play them um, I might adjust the position just a little bit though it won't let me but anyway, we can we can always change that around. So I guess step one would be probably getting rid of the wingers, but um, that's pretty much it. Anyway, but people have been saying that they wanted to see this, and so I think it's time to give them what they want to see, uh, which is the return of the Sinyushka career mode. Um, as far as what I'm looking at, I'll probably be looking at the squad in this first episode just to kind of see where we are, the players we have, especially the younger ones, the older ones, who's going to grow, who's not going to grow. We do have the um, FIFA um, career mode uh, database table um, or the, uh, what, what are they called? I mean... Some people call it the cheat table, but I think it's officially now called the, um, oh, what is it called now? Anyway, if you know, you know, but I'm looking, obviously, just kind of going through the team. Who am I going to want to keep at the club? So here's someone 23 years old, bit of potential, definitely one to keep type of thing. Um, see who's on loan as well. Uh, because I want to make sure that the players that are young that can potentially grow for the club that have a good amount of potential will be able to continue at the club and uh, be able to grow. So um, we got another uh, Anazi. Not amazing. Well, amazing probably for the league, but not really... For anyone else, I guess. But um, I have good memories with this player, but I don't think we'll be using him this time. Uh, obviously, we got Eskin Eskison, who was very good for us. Got this guy, Mads Jensen. Emil Frederiksen, is, he's not on loan, is he? Good. Uh, Alexander Ba. So we've got some players with a bit of potential more at the front than we do anywhere else. 
we are going to set up a scouting network. I want to scout players. And just like last time, um, the things we'll do is most of the players we're going to buy are going to come from here. So if we want a player, we have to go through the um, this setup here for uh, the Global Transfer Network. Um, we cannot buy outside of this. And the idea of doing that is pretty much to make sure that the players we're getting are going to be more realistic to our team. As we talked about with uh, the last one as well that we did, we talked about how we want not just us, but the entire league to advance with us. And obviously you have teams like Norgeland and Copenhagen, Michelin, Bronby, all good teams in their own respect, but we want it to be a competitive league for everyone involved. We want it so that by the time we're in season four, we're not going to be the only team with 80 rated players competing in Europe. I don't want us to be the only team that's just dominating everyone. I want it to be a league where many different teams are doing very well. So with, it's the live editor. There we go. My brain finally started working. With the live editor after each season, I will be doing some automated transfers to try and make it uh, so that other teams will start to be better, whether that be um, maybe young, talented players from the free agents list that we can bring that are like new gen players or the regen players, or bringing in older, more experienced, but past it players from top leagues. This also means for us that if one of our players um, does come in from a potential bid, say, say a Nazi comes in and someone's come in for a bid for him, and and say it's like Derby County, uh, we we're not gonna we can't say no to that because our league prestige is just too low for us to say no to a team like that. Um, well, league prestige, but also just team overall. Having a top player like that, of course, it's just gonna, that's just what's gonna happen. So, that is pretty much that. I think that'll be how we're gonna start off. I'll probably be playing preseason off camera. Obviously, this is just kind of a general overview, so you guys can kind of take a look at what we're gonna be doing. We actually have a pretty good scout, and we are gonna be scouting Denmark. I want physically strong players because that'll either give us a really good center back prospect or a really good striking prospect. I think we have, at least for season one, with Eskison, uh, Anazi, and Albic. I think it's Albic, but I could be wrong. And again, for anyone, pronunciations, you can always put that in the description. Um, I think our defense is a bit old. We all, we have uh, Gartenman. But Kenstrup and Bangard, I mean, Bangard's going to improve a little bit, but Kenstrup's, he's old. Uh, we do have this guy, Schmiedel, who has a bit of potential. He is Austrian, so he can be someone pretty good. We've also got Simonson here, now, uh, who I'll probably put in. Ba is a good player. We could either train him to be right wing back, because he's quite quick, and he would be a really good player to have or we could train him to be a center mid maybe so we're gonna have to see about that um, that'll be most likely what we do uh, in our youth Academy I kind of went through everyone we've got this guy Barry Whelan Irish keeper we could keep him we could sell him um, I'm happy with whatever we do um, if there's kind of a strong, um, in the comments, if there's like a strong thing saying, you know, no, no, keep him, keep him, 
Youth Academy player type of thing, then yeah, I'll go ahead and keep him. Uh, but otherwise, I don't think we are. As far as transfer targets, for now, I'm going to just look through the free agency and see what uh, free agent gems there are. If anything, I'm going to be looking for possibly a striker or center back. Just one of the two, whether that be center back, just to provide either a little more backup because we've got Schmiedel, we've got Olofsson, but that's about it. Um, and I'm going to send probably a few of these guys that are below 55 out on loan. Maybe selling Liebert, but that would be pretty much it. Uh, just so they can get game time somewhere else or at least be able to grow naturally um, so that when they come back, they might be able to be of better service to us. Um, but most likely, I wouldn't say get too attracted to these players that are in the reserves. And to be fair, don't get too attached to many of these players. Because as we move on, I mean, some of them might be coming with us through the leagues. But Dalhenda here, I mean, 29 years old. He's not getting any better. He'll be a player that we're going to start to want to move on at some point so yeah everything's gonna try and be pr i'm gonna try and be pretty realistic with this save as well because i want to make sure that in this save we are making it so it's not like a bunch of unusual signings that like i'm not going to go sign eduardo camavinga and ennis haji eh, by like season three type of thing i want this to be a save where we have a good batch of homegrown talent and um, players that are going to grow with us, but, you know, are maybe younger players in the league, while also keeping a system of, like, you know, if a player is too good for us and for our league, then, and, you know, a team comes in for them, then, yeah, they, they're going to go. It's pretty obvious that they would. So top performers might be hard to keep for the first season, and it'll be hard letting them go. But I mean, if someone's come, if Juventus comes in for a player, are we gonna say no? We're gonna say yes, and we're just gonna have to try and find someone who would want to play for us. Now I'm looking at this guy. I've actually used him before in this uh, FIFA, uh, Tim Pika, and he's actually quite a good player. Um, and so one that I definitely keep on my list. I don't know if we'd be able to get him in season one, but definitely one that I would try and get. Um, not the highest potential or anything like that, but still pretty decent. Um, so we'll just have to take a look at some of these guys, see where we are. And um, I'll pretty much see you guys just for the next episode right at the start um, of the season. And uh, that's pretty much it. So if you're excited for this, then make sure you go ahead, leave a like. If you have some suggestions for players, I will take a look at them. I'm only going to probably, if I sign anyone, sign people off the free agency list. Um, and to try and leave a bit of money for at least one player that is a suggestion from uh, you guys in the comments below. So make sure you go ahead and do that. I'll see you guys next time. Take care.